welcome back. It's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we're going to talk about how to draw a red panda. I'm going a little bit more in depth in this video. I'm talking in um, detail about how I'm drawing the fur. If you do like this video and you prefer this style, just let me know down in the comments. If you want me to do both where I have a shorter video that kind of gives an overview of what I'm doing and the longer one like I do with this one, um, let me know. I can do that as well. So let's get arting. All right, so here's the red panda. And I'm going to go a bit more in depth in the fur. So this one's probably going to be, uh, it's going to take just a little longer. So when you're drawing hair or fur, um, you want to draw it in the direction that it grows, right? So, you know, for instance, by his nose, the hair is going to be going up in this direction. So I'm going to draw it in that way. I'm going to make a quick sort of short line. And you can see that I'm releasing my pin pressure when I come to the end, right? Like you can tell. I'm just making this quick sort of line. And then as I do it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to build up these lines and I'm going to put other lines in between, right? So they're always staggered. But it obviously doesn't always go in this direction. This is why um, it takes me a while to sketch it out. Because as it rounds the edge of the nose, the hair is obviously going to kind of turn as it does that, right? So it's going to be coming up and turning instead as it comes off that side of the nose. Same thing on this side. And you can see I'm just staggering them. So this works for hair. Um, you know, if you're drawing a person, it works for hair, it works for fur, it works for eyebrows. I also try, especially in the sketching step, to make the lines as long as the hair would be, right? So typically in animals, the hair right around um, this section of the face is shorter than it is everywhere else. Uh, and so because of that, th these lines are going to be a bit shorter. That also sometimes means they're a little bit more packed in. And, you know, because this is a sketching step, all I really have to be concerned about is making sure I kind of have fur direction set and the coloration changes sort of set. All right, so we're going to come off. All of that's going to twist down. Now when you get into the um, little cheeks here, you know, especially at first what I would do is I would always curve them. That seemed like the right thing to do, but that's not necessarily true. They'll come straight off the nose once it kind of curves in place. So from here, it's going to be going kind of straight out. And as the nose curves, the hair inevitably curves, right? You can see I'm always staggering those lines. I'm rotating along with the nose as I rotate in. By the time I get to here, I'm almost turned inwards. I don't want to put them, I don't want to put too many, because then I'll, um, I'll interfere with my ability to add shadows and highlights. I'm layering up a little thicker than I should. So when I add full pin pressure, right, like I'll know to put that pin pressure in the direction all these lines are going. I'll match what I've already drawn out because that's what this step is for, is for me to, to sort of figure that out. And as I do it, I'll adjust, you know, throughout the entire time. So as we move around on the face, there's, again, it's just, it's one of those things that the more you do, the more you get used to how the fur um, sort of shifts around. Even still, sometimes I'm debating with myself on how something would really look um, if I, you know, sometimes I bring the fur over too quick or, you know, something doesn't quite twist the way I anticipated it, um, in which case, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. You know, not every animal is exactly the same, but sometimes, too, the way their faces are, I misjudge something. Um, which is why this step is so important. If something seems wrong, I probably don't have it quite right. Now, in this sketch, I have um, the different lines or different colors, right? Like he has um, red pandas have multiple colors in their fur. But you also don't want that to be too jarring. The benefit of how the red panda's coloration is, is especially on the cheeks here, um, it is the difference between like the cheeks and the face, right? Like the cheeks are white, the face is red. And so that helps in that I can actually make this a, a, a more noticeable transition than usual. Otherwise you don't want the hair, like you can tell when you've changed colors on something and it doesn't quite work. 
But what's going to give it that hair effect is those overlapping lines. Right, like I don't want to make a line like this and then like this, you know, and then just kind of run them together. That's noticeable. Sometimes it happens, but I try to avoid it, especially on the sketching ske step. When I start really layering it in, for the most part, that won't even be noticeable. But where it is noticeable is on the whatever side's the shadowed side, because my um, I'm going to fill it in much lighter than... Um, the, the strokes in the beginning, you're going to be able to see those. So if I make a mistake on one side, I um, need to fix it. The side I fill in thicker basically is more forgiving. The side that's on the shadowed side is going to be less forgiving because of how loose the, the um, highlights really are going to be, how light that pin pressure will be. These marks here are really going to show through. They won't as much on the side where I'm going to be adding the highlight. And I'll jump around a lot. You'll see me do that often when I'm drawing. And some of that is because if I know that I have to reconcile for a direction, um, I won't necessarily jump into doing that until I can pull all of it together, right? So the transition into here, I really need to see how the top is also going to be meeting that. So um, until I fully commit um, and get this down here, I can't, I can't say that. I have the angle right. Especially because I also need to match the other side, right? So I have to be doubly mindful over here. Because it just kind of comes straight out. And so I was kind of angling it down. I don't know that I had that quite right. And now as we move to the chin, right, I have to be mindful that the chin's kind of coming down. It's going to be a little bit of a bulge. There's a potential that there's going to be a, a change in um, some fur direction here. And I also don't want these two getting confused when I'm running them together. For the most part, I'll be able to separate it, but once that purple's gone, I don't want to be confused as to what I've done and where my mouth is. So in this case, I'm trying not to overlap them. I'm actually just running it up to the edge. Um, when I add shadows and highlights to that, you'll be able to notice. Um, it's, a, it's a technique that's effective in making sure that sort of shows through. If you don't overlap them, it's clear. Now you can see what I did. Typically what I do when I'm coming down like that is right in the middle is where I'm going to start. I'm going to have the lines on um, one side kind of coming off this way. I'll have some coming down the middle, and then I'll have the lines sort of going the opposite direction. That's how I'm going to be able to reconcile the fur direction on the chin. The hair above the eye will often kind of move in this sort of direction um, as the, you know, there's sort of a, a bulge over the eye at that point. So you'll have hair coming in kind of from the way, you know, from this angle that'll then sort of swoop over the eye. Whereas hair towards the middle is going to be going up more like, um, you know, that direction on the forehead. It hasn't hit that hump yet. So now here on his face, I'm going to make these strokes longer because they're not going to be as tight as they would have been elsewhere. Also going to slowly angle them down because his face, typically the fur is going to kind of follow that edge of the face. So as it comes to the edge, you know, you're going to have the hair that comes straight kind of out from it. Now the ears are also white, but we're going to go ahead and pop into the next color. So they are three separate colors. They have a darker kind of um, brown underneath into the sides, and then this lighter brown that we're going to st start to fill in. So as I do this lighter brown, now I need to make sure that these all line up in a way that makes total sense. So as I bring this up, this needs to match that same line that I brought these other lines up to. So as I do it, I have to be aware how it's connecting in, because if I connect it in wrong, um, it's going to be blaringly obvious. But things like eyes are also really important to define the shape of, so I'm going to be very careful as I come around the corner of that eye to make sure that's very clear and you can see that. So as it comes off the back of the eye, typically it's going to come straight out, 
you know, like this, and then underneath is going to be coming kind of down. I typically will like loop and come down, right? Like you can kind of see that. Let me zoom in. I'm going to do almost this little like hump, hump and down, hump and down. Until I get kind of that straight out, and then I'm going to just kind of go straight out. The way this hump works is it's going to send it uh, this sort of arch, right? Like I'm going to draw it down um, because that you have that bulge kind of coming down. And some variation of fur, like some wobbling back and forth, actually adds to the realism. So if I don't get it 100%, you know, I have a little one kind of going off to the left and another one maybe coming up to the right, like that's actually fine, especially on animals that have longer curlier hair. Um, you can add small variations like that um, and it only makes it more believable. Now I often will flash off the um, sketch layer because that's going to tell me a lot more about how it's turning out than it is with the purple on it. I know I've mentioned this before but I sketch in purple because um, I, I basically choose a color that doesn't match um, the animal in any way so that I don't get confused um, and then when I pop it off you know the reason I do that all the time is it really gives me an idea am I messing something up do I need to readjust something how is it looking so far or you know do I need to pivot because it's just something's not right I have fur going in the wrong way you know something like that so I often pop that off when I need to see more of what I'm doing All right, so now that it is sketched out, we're going to start adding the highlights. And we're going to start once again by the nose. So when I'm doing this, I'm putting full pin pressure and I'm just filling in following the angle I've already created with that sort of sketching layer underneath. So as I come to that edge of the nose, I sort of take, I, you know, twist it down. Just following all those lines we've already sorted out. And I should have mentioned I'm having my light source come from over here. Now when I say that, what I mean is the light source is coming from above to the right and in front of, so it's on this side not the back side because you want your subject to have as much light as possible on their face so I always have it coming from in front so it will catch the light and this can be a little sloppier but I am keeping it um, and it can be a little longer but I am still keeping it somewhat short Now, as we think about light source, so highlights and shadowing, in my opinion, are one of the most powerful things in an art composition, right? Like, I don't have to draw a red panda to look perfectly like a red panda. I can make one much more abstract. And what's going to sell it is the shadows and highlights. That's how we complete the illusion of um, a three-dimensional object in a two-dimensional plane is the shadows and highlights. To do that though, as I come to like this edge here, this edge will be in just a little bit of shadow because that edge is um, a little bit more forward than the rest of the face, right? The same is true when I get to the edge of his face on this side. Even though this is the side on the highlight, there's going to be just that little bit of shadow. Now not at the top where it's connecting in, it's going to be more at the bottom where um, it actually separates and we can't see the connection to the face. 
Now, when you're doing this, when you have a, a fur color transition, I've noticed it's a lot easier to kind of overlap this a bit, right? So I'm going to push the white up into that red because I don't want it to be a jarring transition. I want it to be a little smoother. Sometimes you can make them so that they're they're almost too jarring and you look at that and you know you have to taper it out or it looks like a separate part of the animal that was sort of an afterthought. Now you'll notice I'm not going too far over to the left and some of that is because I'm gonna have to sort out exactly where the shadow kicks in and I'm gonna do that um, by lessening my pin pressure until I sort it out right so I'm pretty confident that up until here it's gonna have full pin pressure and so I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that in and then what I'm gonna do is lessen it up so now it's just light pin pressure still the same idea I'm still intermixing them doing the exact same thing I am on the other side with the heavy pin pressure I'm just really letting off here thinner strokes because my pin pressure isn't as hard and a little bit further apart they're not as jumbled together because well not only are the strokes thinner not putting them as close together now I'm gonna do that for this whole side here but inevitably what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be brightening this up so I can add more strokes to these to brighten up just like I do with this with the full pin pressure it'll it'll work very much the same now as I come up to the edge you can see I lessened off that pin pressure right here on the edge but I also need to make sure that this transition from highlight into shadow isn't too much as well because I don't want that to be like a distinctive line I want it to kind of slowly taper into the shadow so to do that I'm still lessening off my pin pressure I have it a little bit more than I did when I did this edge and I'm gonna have to filter that a bit into it let's see even this is just that little bit too harsh so I'm gonna just fix that a little bit here so anytime I'm not certain or I have to um, you know make a, a transition where I'm gonna have to taper it off I'll lessen my pin pressure like this um, you know I know that where I'm drawing is still in highlight but I need to make sure that the transition to shadow is smooth and so I have to give myself some room to work to create that and then his lips kind of turn just that little bit in here as this sort of comes to a point so this side would actually be in shadow and this edge on the red pandas it doesn't have to be perfect because they're a little like hairy so in the end I'm going to be adding some scraggly hair to the edge of um, his you know cheeks muzzle whatever whatever this is called to be a little bit more careful on like short-handed animals but you know only so much it doesn't have to be perfect because of the fur adding the fur like this gives you actually extra flexibility because I don't have to have a perfect line makes it a lot easier to draw in my opinion at least for me it's a lot easier to draw this way than um, in other styles because it doesn't have to be perfect my lines aren't ever straight I have trouble making a straight line in fact my muscle memory in certain angles is not there I have to twist pretty far on this angle in particular right now twist my whole body to be able to draw it it's just um, it's what I've developed and haven't developed right so my lines aren't straight but they don't have to be you know everybody can draw it's just developing that muscle memory and using a style and a technique that you're the most comfortable with and again in my opinion shadows and highlights are the king of that all right now to bring that over and taper it in still using light pen pressure here I'm just adding more lines to lighten it up now we're gonna add just a burst of light 
on this side too. Some animals and red pandas are similar. Their noses are very much like a dog. Um, but their noses don't stick out all that much from the face, so there would be just a little highlight on this side. That's going to help indicate that this comes forward while the rest of it sort of angles back. And I always pull back because that gives me the full story, right? Like, <clears throat> when I'm really close in, it doesn't necessarily tell me that I have something right or wrong. So I'll pull back and make adjustments. I don't think I quite have it right here. Now on the chin, I always do it very light until I sort it out because there's a whole lot that's happening in the chin. Um, and I need to know, and by that I mean, you know, the light source where it's sort of kicking in. I need that sort of flexibility to sort it out. So I'm just going to do it lightly and that's going to give me the flexibility I need to come in and add the highlight on top of my light print pressure. And again, just like the top, he's going to have, you know, some scraggliness to his chin as well. Now I messed up a little bit over here. Um, I brought this down into the chin. I've been debating on what to do about it, but pulling back, I think I'm definitely going to have to erase. I hate having to erase like this, but the best way for me to do it is to take a chunk out so I can feather it back in. I'm going to give him that same kind of little bit of a smile we get on the other side, and I brought it down just a little too much. Luckily, this is on the shadowed side, so that's a little easier to pull back in than um, if I'd done it on the other. Now as I'm adding the highlight onto the chin, I'm not going to go all the way up. It's um, going to catch that little bit of shadow there. And I'm not putting full pin pressure, but I am pressing a little harder um, than I was when I was doing the lighter strokes. It's very quick to overlay too much, but also really easy to undo it, especially at this stage. And we're going to pull that highlight just a little bit over this hump, and now we're going to start tapering it off. So I'm putting lighter and lighter pin pressure, being mindful of how I'm filling it in. I need to make sure that this sort of very gently comes to an end. Which is fine there, I'm just brightening up this section, it was a little dark. This would be in full highlight. So it's full pin pressure. But again, I want to make sure it's sort of raggedy right. And to do that, I'm going to go just outside of its boundaries. So I'm lightening this up just a little bit because his eye is going to actually be turning away from the light as it turns inward. And I just am sorting out exactly where I'm going to put that little bit of a shadow. It's going to be in the red as well, so it's probably going to be more towards the inside of the eye, more like here, which is where I have it. On this side, it's the opposite. You know, the eye's turning inward here, so it's catching that light, so this whole thing is going to be in highlight, whereas part of this is going to be in shadow. Now this whole section of white is going to be in highlight, right? The edge of the face is, is down here, so that's not going to affect this section. And then this side is the side away from the light source, so it's going to be in shadow. Might be a little highlight running through, sometimes that helps make it more believable. The variation in brightness um, helps make certainly a shadowed section look more believable where some strands of hair might be catching the light. So it doesn't, it, it matters that you're putting it in shadow, but it doesn't matter that your pressure remains consistent. It's fine if some, some um, are brighter than others. Oh, 
All right, so we're going to switch to the next color. So as I'm doing it, right, when you come down by the eye, there's going to be a little bit of shadow as it, you know, the, the eye itself as it's going to kind of round into where the eye is, right? So this whole inner edge is going to be in shadow, whereas the bottom where it's catching the highlight, um, you know, it's, it's coming back out of that. So it would catch the light and it's going to be in highlights, but always on that top, right along that edge, even though this part's going to be in highlight, you know, I need to make sure that this is in shadow. And this edge here where we had that coming down is also going to be just that little bit of shadow. Because again, his, his eye there is rounding away from the light source. And then we connect it back in. We brighten that up. You know, and, and don't be afraid to overlap here, right? Like, as I mentioned before, you want to make sure that the colors are kind of blending a little bit together. So it's okay if you don't line it up perfectly, which is, again, the great thing of working about this style. I don't have to have a perfect edge. A little highlight, a little shadow here. His eyes coming down. But right around here, highlight's going to kick in. I am more careful around the eye um, because that does need to be a little bit more of a better circle. And just like the other side, you know, the eye that is, uh, is rounding away from the light source, we're going to add just that little bit of shadow. But also like the other side, underneath the eye, there will still be a burst of highlight even though this is on the shadowed side. We're going to pull that highlight a little bit into the next color here, this darker red. Because um, you, if you have a shadow and highlight change where a um, color change happens, it sometimes looks like it's just a different color and not necessarily a highlight or a shadow. Now this um, is going to be in highlight because the eye is rounding towards the light source over here. Now the forehead is going to have a lot of um, highlight because the forehead is, you know, a little bit flatter typically on most animals. Um, there's not a lot of, it's kind of the upper edge of the, the ball. If you think of the, the panda, this red panda's head as a ball, right, the forehead doesn't have a lot of bumps. It's just how you would, you know, shadow that, that, cir that circular shape, that rounded shape, which means up here it's going to catch the highlight um, until it starts getting into shadow kind of along this backside. Now the top of the head, again, we're going to have this going just into that shadow because, um, right, it's, it's rounding away from us at this point, so it would no longer be catching the light the same way. All edges on a drawing should have a shadow unless the light source is directly beside it instead of in front of or um, just off center. And I usually do it just off center. It's usually what's going to get you the best light. Um, but if you do that, everything's going to every, every edge is going to be in shadow. The highlight is just going to be more sort of centered on one side but within the shape itself. All right, so now we'll move on to this last color before we get into, um, you know, finishing up the ears in white and then adding in a dark gray for the nose and there's a little spot around the eyes. This is the last of the um, 
for colors. So underneath is also going to have a, a pretty good shadow too. So in addition to just this sort of edge, it's going to get deeper as it comes under him. All right, so I'm gonna add a little extra kind of um, messy fur around his uh, nose, cheeks, face right here. And it'll put the white on top as well. So I'm just gonna make some short kind of messy lines here. I'm doing that by very lightly coming out straight, making bows, right? Let me zoom in, maybe that'll help. As I come down, right, like I'm just kind of, again, it's not, I'm not putting a lot of pin pressure, I'm just kind of messing it up a little bit. I need to make sure it matches the hair though too. I'll do the same on this side. Again, not much, just a few sort of extra floofs. I'm gonna have some whiskers at the end too that'll also give him a messier look. You don't want all the hair going in the same direction because it's not really realistic, right? So I need to make sure it's kind of going in multiple directions. There we go, now he's got a little Scraggly our face. And let's. Oh, I missed. I missed a spot on the red. And now we will finish up the ears before we move on to adding the nose and the eyes in. I might add a layer of um, scraggle. I think I will actually come back in and sort of flush this out to be a little bit rounder. And then probably blend this a little bit better on this edge, right? Like this looks a little too jarring. You can see over here it's blended a lot better than this line here. So I'm gonna, I'll have to come back in and, and sort of fix that. So as you're adding highlights and shadows, it's um, easier to think of the different shapes as separate shapes, right? So the ears as a separate shape, the, you know, circle of the nose as a separate shape, the cheeks as separate shapes, the chin, and they're all shapes within shapes. I find that an easier way to sort out how shadowing would go. Um, and then as you get used to it, you can kind of, it becomes a little bit more natural. But instead of thinking of the whole, which can be um, a bit overwhelming, just break it down. And here I'm just going along the edge of the ear so it's light pin pressure. Now ears are something that I tend to lightly fill in before I heavily do it because you'll have points that are, um, you know, you have to sort out, especially on something like this where the middle of the ear is gonna be the darkest to sort out the highlights and shadows. And I prefer to do that after I've lightly um, filled in everything for that, you know, deeper control you get. All right, now I'll try to feather this out over here. Although it occurred to me I made his ear over here a little scraggly, so I need to do the same to the one on this side. 
All right, so now we have the nose and the eyes. First, we've got to get the black, which is um, because I design on black, I can't do black. So I'm going to come over here to this gray and what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly fill it in just like with the hair we're going to do um, the base layer so this is the drawing layer and then we'll add the highlights with gray you have to be a little bit more careful because it um, can show up as gray and you want the gray to look black so um, I have to be mindful about how many together, how much pin pressure I'm using the whole way through. Just a little trickier. And even though it's not fur, I still overlap the lines. Still works. So now we're going to add in the pin pressure and the highlights. Even still, this highlighted section of the black, I am still using very little pin pressure. I don't want to fully press down or it will show up as gray. So the next thing to do is the eyes. My pandas have brown eyes. Now they also have um, eyes kind of like a cat where they have the little slits. So first I'm going to do it as a circle and I'll turn it into, um, you know, extend that shape a bit. Just need to make sure he looks like is looking at us. So something I always do with eyes, it's something I, I don't um, really do anywhere else, is I take the select tool because eyes do need to be um, a certain crispness to them. And so to get that, that sort of crisp queen line, I'll take the select tool and I'll erase out any Thing that doesn't quite line up and then make sure any strange gaps are filled all right so with the light source coming in you know from over here we're going to add the highlights with that in mind so the first thing I tend to do is add a little burst of highlight on this inside. Just put full pin pressure and just make sure that it's going to catch. It's on the opposite side of the light source because that's where um, you know the recess of the pupil is coming back out so that edge is going to catch the light. All right and so then we're going to fill in all the way underneath is going to be in highlight, so all of this is going to be in highlight. It's going to be a little bit of a shadow on this edge, and then it's going to have a shadow along the um, outside as well. And then, of course, as I get up into here, I need to feather that in as well. And then as I come around this side, I'm going to taper it out as it gets back into shadow. Alright, so in my opinion, one of the most important things of drawing eyes is getting the light flare right. And that light flare is just going to be this strong just burst of white on the eye. You want it on the side of the highlight and it goes into the pupil. I always start on the eye that is um, more in shadow because um, because it's more in shadow, I want to make sure that its light placement makes sense and that I don't have to make this smaller or bigger if I do it over here. And all I'm doing is making sure it lines up. It's the same on both sides. And I just fill it with the foreground color, which I've already changed. 
and that's what's going to give it its little burst of white. In fact, I actually think in this case it's a little too far over, so we're just going to nudge it a bit and let his pupils come through. But it still needs to be covering it. There we go. Okay, so now I need to add in some whiskers. And they're going to be in white, just getting a feel for where I had originally sketched them, and then we'll just go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so to do whiskers, I move my arm at the shoulder and I make a very light stroke, right? So I'm going to do this light stroke. You often want to like pair them up so you don't want to end up with, um, you know, just one singular whisker hanging out. You want a bunch together, that's what's going to make it look more realistic. Got a bunch of hair coming off his chin too. And then whatever you do on one side, you want to try and mimic on the other. Same thing though. Light pin pressure. Not like that. <laughs> Moving at the shoulder. For every one that goes up, I need to put one up. And I'll just build it up until it looks right. Yeah, whiskers are one of those things that can add like a nice burst of detail. You know, it would look fine without them, but I think the whiskers really help add sort of an, another layer to it. I like adding some you know, sometimes a little detail like that can make a big difference, so. All right, so that is how you draw a red panda. I hope that's helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.